today I'm going to show you how I introduce crate training to my dogs. To start, you want to make sure you have a wire crate or a crate that your dog is generally comfortable with that is bigger than your dog. It should be big enough for them to stand up, turn around, and lie down in comfortably. Uh, in addition to that, you want to make sure you have your dog and you want to have some nice high value treats. Like any training sessions, before you get started, you want to make sure you break up the treats so that they're in bite-sized pieces rather than giving a piece this big. You want to give a piece this big so that the dog can quickly eat it and move on and continue working with you. Are you ready, Moose? When you first introduce the crate, you're not going to throw a piece of food into it. We're not luring the dog into the crate. We're letting the dog offer the behavior we want. So rather than throwing a piece of food and having our dog chase it into the crate and then rewarding it. We're simply going to let curiosity get the best of them. By opening the crate, and waiting for the dog to enter. Yes! Good boy! Good boy! The dog enters, we mark it, and we reward. So it's action, marker, reward. I'm going to open the crate door. As the dog stays back in the crate, I'm going to reward it. Yes, good boy. It's really important that you always have one hand on the door when you're first teaching this so that you can correct the dog. The only form of correction your dog is going to get when you're introducing the crate is simply closing the door. If the dog moves forward and tries to release him or herself, you're just going to close the door. If the dog stays back, yes, good boy. Yes, what a good boy. You reward. You'll see I have this my hand firmly on this door, and I'm treating with my right hand. The door opens out to the left, so it's easier for me to put my arm in and treat with my right hand and to operate the door with my left. If the door opened the other way, I would simply switch hands and open with my right and treat with my left. As Moose is still staying back, yes, good boy. I'm going to continue to reward and treat. Good boy. And then I'm going to offer him the release word. The release word for Moose is break. So when I say break, that is the cue to him that he's allowed to leave the crate. Break! Good boy! And I'm going to go ahead and treat him when he comes out of the crate. I'm going to spend this time to get ready with another piece of treats, broken up into bite-sized pieces, making sure that I'm ready for the next training piece when he enters. Yes! Good boy! Yes, very good. The first time I marked, I marked for Moose choosing to enter the crate. He offered the behavior I was looking for. I rewarded that. The second time I marked, I waited for Moose to actually back into the crate fully and settle down. In his case, he offered a lie down. A dog simply backing to the back end of the crate or also offering a sit would have been enough for me. Good boy. I continue to tell him that he's good and I start practicing the action of closing the door and opening the door. Yes. And if he holds the position or he stays to the back of the crate as I open the door, then that is enough for him to get a reward. It's proving to me that he knows that me simply opening this door is not enough for him to just get to leave. Yes, good boy. Break. Good job. Good boy. Again, I'm going to get the treat ready. I'm going to break it up into little bite-sized pieces. And I'm going to wait for Moose to offer the behavior again. Yes, good boy. Very good. Good boy. Yes. I'm going to close the door again. This time, I'm going to make it harder. I'm going to move my position. So now, for Moose, it's not simply just an open door, but I'm also a little bit higher up. Maybe I'm going to go run off and do something fun. We'll see if it makes a difference. Yes! Good boy! He maintained his position. I'm going to offer it one more time and see if he does it again. Yes! Good boy! Now I'm going to change it again and stand up. We'll see if he holds it again. Uh-oh. You see, this is why it's important to continue to have one hand on the door at all times. Me standing up signaled to Moose that we were going to go someplace, and that was enough to get him to stand up and come forward when I opened the door. 
So I simply closed the door. That was his only correction was a closed door and no reward. And now I'm gonna wait for him to offer the down position that I was treating him for before. Yes, good boy. Very good. That is a good boy. It's important that we give our dogs the opportunity to think through the puzzle that we're putting in front of them. For Moose, the puzzle was, why did the door slam shut? What does my mom want from me so that she will open that door again and I can get that treat? So rather than me luring him or giving him a command, I simply waited him out. I didn't make eye contact. And I looked in his general direction so I could see what he was doing without catching his gaze and making him stare at me and getting him confused. I didn't talk to him. I didn't keep giving him different verbal cues. I didn't give him any physical cues. I simply closed the door and I waited for him to work through the puzzle on his own. Yes. Good boy. I'm going to close the door one more time. Step away from it. Step back toward it. You maintain the position. Yes. Good boy. I'm going to step back while the door is open. You might not be able to get to this place in your first training session and that's okay. I'm going to step back and reward. Good boy. When you're first adding distance, it's really important that you make sure you take your time. Don't run all the way back. Don't take six steps. When you're first adding distance, just take one step. One step away from an open crate door is going to be a lot for your dog to first take. When they're successful there twice, you can add to the criteria and you can take two steps back. Good boy. This has been a really great first training session for Moose. He's never learned how to crate train this way. He's never learned to be thoughtful about his crate training. Good boy. And you can see in just one session he actually learned, oh, when I'm in my crate, mom actually wants me to lie down and settle and that's when I get rewarded. Good boy. I also never let Moose out of his crate without being released first. So I'm not just gonna wait for him to come on out on his own. I'm gonna give him a command, in his case, break. That's his release cue to go ahead and exit the crate and stop what he's doing. Break! Good boy. What a good boy. Yes. You're a very good boy. When your dog is confidently offering the crated behavior, you can start to put a command to it. For my dogs, I use the word crate. So for Moose, I'm gonna use the word crate. Moosey, go crate. Good boy. Yes! And because in his first training session, I set the criteria that he must be in a down, when I tell him to go crate, simply entering the crate is not enough anymore. He must enter the crate and lie down. Yes, good boy. And that becomes his criteria for the command to crate. You don't have to make your dog lie down. Your dog could sit, your dog could rest in the back of the crate. The important part is that your dog isn't hovering at the exit trying to get out. Good boy. Ready, Moose? Break! Good boy! What a good boy! Yes, you are! Get it, yes! Good boy, yes! The best part about teaching a dog to crate in this manner is that once you've done it, and you've done it really well, you can use it to channel your dog's drive. And you can also teach extreme self-control. For instance, the crate right next to me has been open this whole time. My puppy, who's 10 months old, has been sitting in there waiting her turn to be released. Even though I've been using her release command, she knew it wasn't for her, so she's just been waiting. And her reward is going to be this toy, which even though I'm wagging it in front of her crate, she still has not come out for. Frenzy, break! Yes! Good girl!